Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and I'm a little late on this one, I know, but with the release of the Roman Civ in Return of Rome into AoE 2, there were actually some civilization swaps in a couple of the campaigns, going from probably either it Italians or Byzantines over to the Romans. Those two campaigns are, of course, going to be uh, Attila and Alaric. And so I'm just going to go through and show off uh, all the instances where civs that weren't Romans became Romans. And because it comes first chronologically, uh, we're going to start with Alaric, which, was that always three swords? Was that always three swords? I thought that used to be two swords. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. All right, so our very first civilization swap comes in Alaric 1, the Battle of the Frigidus. And this used to be Byzantines versus Byzantines with the two halves of the Roman Empire. Now, the Eastern Roman Empire is still the Byzantines, as one might expect. But the Western Roman Empire is now the Romans. So they've got some centurions now. They don't have cataphracts. And I might go back and replay these campaigns as well, depending on uh, if there's enough interest in it. But yeah, you're going to have to fight the Romans here already in the first Alaric scenario. Everything else uh, looks basically what you'd expect. They're in Castle Age, so no legionaries. Just going to have to deal with these strong, strong centurions. Now, the second uh, Alaric scenario, Raising Hellas, does not have any civ swaps because you are dealing entirely with the Greeks and therefore the Byzantine Empire, or the Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, same thing, different name. Uh, so yeah, this one is going to be exactly the same, probably. All right, moving on now to the third Alaric scenario, the Belly of the Beast. Uh, they did potentially have the opportunity to turn everybody into the Romans, uh, but they chose My to stick with Cremona as the Italians. The Shut up, Atolf. Uh, and Aquileia as the Byzantines, probably just for some gameplay variety. You know, you don't want to just be running into the same sieve constantly over and over again. That said, Ravenna is now the Romans. You can see they've got some legionaries over here. And you don't fight them a ton, uh, because at the end, remember, Soros, you know, betrays you. And he takes over this little town right here, and you have to fight him. Also, Ravenna... Oh, hey, you got some Drummonds here, too. And, yeah. They're going to they're gonna land some troops at you. I'm sure that is going to be a little bit different. They got some Centurions over here. There's Emperor Honorius. You never really have to go all the way over here. But still, these guys, Ravenna, is now the Romans. And they've got those scary, scary Drummonds sailing around all over the place. Uh, Soros himself is still the Goth, so as one might expect. The fourth Alaric scenario, the Giant Falls. Now, of course, this will be Romans because, you know, you're in Rome. All of them. And uh, it used to be the city garrison. This, I think, is different. Uh, Rome itself, I think, went from Italians to, well, Romans. The Imperial Legions went from Byzantines to Romans. And the city garrison, I think, also went from Italians to Romans. You can see, of course, the city is going to be looking a lot different. You're going to be fighting legionaries and centurions. Of course, the centurions buffing up those legionaries, remember. Could be a little bit tricky. What has become of this once we'll have to see if they get, like, full post-imp upgrades and everything. Again, if we choose to go ahead and replay that. I Was there a relic there the whole time? Hmm. Regardless, we'll be seeing uh, potentially a little bit of a tougher challenge. I mean, the legionaries are going to be insanely strong versus all the goth units. So even more than ever, I'd recommend going for cavalry in this scenario. Also a relic over here. Was that always there? Who knows? Now, last but not least in the Alaric campaign, we have uh, a kingdom of our own. And, conquer all of the Roman cities and in this one, you do fight the Western Roman Empire. Possibly. You can actually subvert them really easily by because as soon as you build a castle in one of the cities, uh, the Romans go from neutral to enemy to you. But you can easily subvert this by just building the, all three castles at the same time. It's not like you have to build a castle the second you take out a city. Uh, so yeah, still, if you are going to go play it the correct way, you're going to have to go ahead and fight the Romans here one last time. And this is what their base looks like now. We'll have to see if they upgrade uh, all the way to legionaries. Again, that could be quite difficult for the goth infantry. We'll have to see uh, with if and when we replay this campaign. But yeah, those are going to be the changes in Alaric. I Pretty much all of the changes that I would expect to be made are being made. Keeping the Byzantines as the Eastern Roman Empire, or the Eastern Roman, or Eastern Roman Empire as the Byzantines, but making the Western Roman Empire the Romans. Cool, cool stuff. Of course, our other AoE 2 campaign that takes place during the time of the Roman Empire is Attila. So let's go ahead and see if any of these scenarios are changed. Every oh, Blada. 
is as if you seek to lead the You had so yourself. much to live for in life. So, in this scenario, back in AOC, or in HD, if you guys uh, started with that one, this was actually called the Western Roman Empire, even though we are clearly in the Eastern Roman Empire. Oh my god, all the dialogue. Follow! But yeah, now we're the... It's, it's correctly labeled the Eastern Roman Empire starting in DE, and now you are going to be the Byzantines, so no discernible changes in this scenario. Or it looks like we are the same deal here in Attila II, the Greek, uh, the Greek ride, the Great Ride. Uh, we are in Greece and the surrounding areas in this scenario. Uh, and so everybody's going to be Byzantines except the Scythians and yourself. Fun fact, back in AOC and in HD, there were a bunch of different civilizations. Like Sophia was Franks, Dyrrachium I think was Teutons, Thessaloniki, Thessalonica. Uh, was Byzantines, Adrianople I think was still Byzantines, and Nisus was Goths. Uh, with DE, they changed them all to the, uh, the Byzantines to reflect that you're in the Byzantine Empire. Eastern Roman Empire, again, still Byzantines. Don't see any, like, legionaries or special units, but again, we'll have to see if that's different. Attila III, the walls of Constantinople, still in the Eastern Roman Empire, still the Eastern Roman Empire half of the campaign. Can't expect to see any changes, and that is indeed the case. Uh, Constantinople, Philippopolis, both still Byzantines. Don't know why Marcianopolis is Goths, but hey, that that they are. But yeah, of course, here we are. I mean, it's it's literally the Hagia Sophia is their, their wonder of the Byzantines. You probably want to keep the Eastern Roman Empire as the Byzantines. All right, so in Attila IV, this starts with the Western Roman half of the uh, campaign of Attila. And as you can see, the Western Roman Empire is indeed the Romans. They used to also have a samurai over here to the north of the map, but then they just replaced it with an invisible object because the uh, campaign devs are boring and they don't like giving fun little units in the corner of the map. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit trickier to discern exactly what the Roman Empire is going to look like. They used to send over, I think it was centurions and legionaries as well, but they weren't the, the new Roman versions. But with the power of some cheat codes, C234, we're going to torpedo. Torpedo 3, Torpedo 4. Well, I guess you just need to destroy the Orleon Town Center to activate the trigger. Yeah, as you can see, this is going to be the fully upgraded Roman army, uh, and this is probably going to make the fight against the Romans uh, that much more challenging. Let's see all these units flooding in from the side of the map. So yeah, that is definitely going to be a change. The Catalonian fields used to fight the Byzantines uh, with the Romans. Now, of course, the Romans are the Romans. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, and this is probably going to be one of the more significant gameplay changes because, well, Romans, they you, they fight a little bit differently. I don't know if that they'll necessarily be easier or more difficult for Huns to deal with. Is I just don't have enough experience playing the Romans just yet. Although their castles aren't going to be as strong. And actually, I forget. I don't think Roman towers are that good because they spend a bunch of towers. I think you just have guard tower. No, no, you have keep, but you don't have arrow sluts. So yeah, it might be a bit easier to attack, but the Roman units themselves are probably stronger. Uh, Alans are still going to be... Well, it says they're Alans, but they're actually Huns. And the Visigoths are going to be the Goths. Austro-Goths are Goths. Franks are Franks. All of that makes sense, but this is probably going to be the most significant gameplay change that you see. All right, last one, of course, going to be the fall of Rome. Now... Again, what the devs could have done originally is just make all of these, like, Byzantines or whatever back in the day. But they chose to give all of the different Roman cities different civilizations because they all build wonders. And you want to, you know, spread the wonder love, so to say. Making sure that you're not fighting the same sorts of armies over and over again. Even though the civs don't make a ton of sense, like Celts in uh, Aquileia, Batavium is Britons. Uh, but you want to make the... You want to give the cities that unique flavor that makes this scenario, honestly, one of the most memorable out there. I love this scenario. Uh, Mediolanum is still Teutons. But that said, Rome itself, back in AOC, it was Byzantines. Then it was changed to Italians. And now they are the Romans, of course. Uh, but they don't actually play a direct role in the scenario. You just have some Centurions hanging around over here. They used to be Cataphracts. I think they were Centurions in DE. But now they are just... Just Centurions, they're just hanging out. Got some aqueducts that were added in DE as well. Nothing too crazy, and those are going to be the changes found in the Attila campaign. 
Now, last but not least, there was one other change that was made, and it's actually in the Saladin campaign. And you may have noticed this in the Saladin co-op, but Tyre used to be Byzantines back in the day, but they were changed to Sicilians with the uh, the co-op campaign, because Sicilians make more sense than Byzantines, because uh, during the time of Saladin, I believe that Tyre was taken over by the Crusaders with Richard the Lionheart. I don't remember exactly when those years line up. Uh, but now we have some kind of weird situations where you have keeps and bombard towers for Sicilians who get donjons, of course. Uh, but now it's going to be some sergeants that they make instead of cataphracts. Uh, uh, Tyre also used to make bombard cannons. So we'll have to see if maybe that's a little bit different. Uh, but that's still just a change that they made. Nothing to do with the Romans. But nonetheless, I wanted to point it out. Anyway, guys, those were the Civ swaps that we found in Return of Rome. Hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely Leave a like if you did, and we'll see if we replay the Attila and Alaric campaigns again, if there is enough, enough interest in me doing so. And of course, shout out to my Patreon supporters with Anonymous and Tristan in the Great Wolf tier, and then Carolyn, Donnie, Elvenor, Fryru, and Tanduri in the Dire Wolf tier. So thank you all guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.